Hey everyone, I'm Andy. And I'm Sean. And this is the Commander's Brew. This week, Halden and Paco. Hey everyone, thanks for watching here on YouTube. It's the Commander's Brew. It's our brand new deck tech. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know what to do if you want to help us out. Just hit subscribe or maybe even help share. We're so close to 10,000 subscribers right now. Uh, we're really trying to get there uh, uh, as soon as we can. So that'd be great. If you haven't subscribed yet, please uh, consider doing so. Uh, also, if you want to help out directly, you can go to patreon.com slash commanders brew and you can uh, help sh make the show quite literally with a, a donation or with also uh, uh, joining our Discord server and helping us brew these decks like what happened with this week's deck. It was a lot of fun. So check us out, patreon.com slash commanders brew uh but without further ado let's get to this this week's deck tech which is halden and paco yeah just so excited to be talking about these guys uh we did a quick brew video for our preview uh where we talked about you know the different possibilities that exist with these guys and i think we hit on some really cool stuff some stuff that i tapped into for this uh so i mean you know let's Let's read, let's read these commanders once again, uh, our very good boy. I'll start off by reading Paco, Arcane Retriever. Uh, he's a three red green for the legendary Elemental Hound. Uh, he partners with Halden, Avid Arcanist. He has Haste. He's a three, three. And he says, whenever Paco all Arcane Retriever attacks, exile the top card of each player's library and put a fetch counter on each of them. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Paco for each non-creature card exiled this way. Um, I'll be honest with you, while brewing this, I totally forgot he had haste, but I don't think I included any haste enablers, so that's good. <laughs> I think I might, I, well, I included ones that do other stuff too, so that's good. Uh, yeah. So I totally forgot about that. Uh, Sean, read the reader or his partner here. Right, so Paco's going to come out first. Paco's going to get a bunch of cards uh, with fetch counters on him, and then you're going to cast Halden, Avid Arcanist. Two and a blue, legendary human wizard partners with Paco. Uh, one, four. You may play non-creature cards from exile with fetch counters on them if you exiled them, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. So Paco gets you the spells, Halden lets you cast them. Uh, I would not run out Halden before I had a few spells in exile, because if you remove Halden, we just got to recast them more expensively later. So Paco does the setup, Halden knocks it out. I have one beef with uh, this combo of partners. Okay. Uh, and I'm sad to say that I do, but I really do. So each other partner that came in mm. these uh, in these commander decks. I know where you're going. Every, like each individual partner has an ability that they have and that they can use and do on their own. Yep. Except Halden. Yeah. Halden is the only one where his ability only affects stuff you've done with Paco. Can't, so if, so Halden you, does literally nothing without Paco. Yeah, literally nothing. If you haven't cast or attacked with Paco, Halden does nothing. So there's no reason to run him out first. I mean, unless you're you know you're gear, you're gearing up, obviously. You unless you're cool that. mustache tribal. If you're cool mustache tribal, Halden's your boy. <laughs> uh, look out. Um, but yeah, I, I I kind of realized that again brewing this deck. I was like, what? He he does nothing by himself. No. That sucks. It sucks. <laughs> that sucks. sucks. I'm sorry. That sucks. They left out an ability that Halden should have. He should have something where he, like, I don't know, untaps something or something. I don't know. Anyways, we still love these guys, and together they are a formidable pair. So let's just, you know, start talking about all the various teamer neat moves. Working on a neat moves. All right. So uh, the first neat move, uh, and it's like a kind of a couple of different neat moves, is that, you know, we're going to be attacking with Pac. We're going to be exiling cards from our opponents, the top of our opponents' libraries. Hopefully we're going to be able to cast some of them. The way we're going to be able to cast some of them is if we just make sure that the ones we get are the non-creature spells that we want. So we're going to have to try and control that top deck a little bit. So um, we uh, let's let's start talking about um, one of the best ways to do it, which is Dokra Mystic. Uh, single blue for a merfolk wizard it's a one one and you pay uh, blue and tap it each player reveals the top card of his or her library you may put the revealed cards into their owner's graveyards and if you don't each player draws a card so basically what dr mystic says is like if you don't like what's on the top of the library so you get you know take a look at it if you don't like what's on the top it goes to the it goes or it goes to the graveyard 
or they draw it either way. So you're basically going to put it in the graveyard every time. It's kind of like a way to mill a little bit because you probably don't want them to draw the cards. Um, but we also need a way to uh, sometimes see what's up there first, right? Uh, which is where Wise and Cinches comes in. Three and a green for, sorry, three and a uh, blue for a 1-3 Fairy Rogue with Flying. It says players play with the top card of their libraries revealed. So this is going to let us see what's up. And before we can attack, maybe we'll Dock or Mystic or, or, or do something like Ghoul Caller's Bell for a, a single uh, mana for an artifact. And you just tap it and each player puts a top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Um, but what if, you know, you got two spells from your, you know, your, your, in a four player game. Two spells look good. Obviously, we're not going to ghoul call her bell. We like those two spells. We'll take those. But this other guy over here has got a creature on top. Well, let's see what his next card is by using Codex Shredder. Again, single mana for an artifact that says tap. Target player puts a top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. And then we can also pay five and tap to sack Codex Shredder and return a card from our graveyard to, to your hand. Um, I were in the Discord and we we're talking about this with a couple of the gang in there. And... Um, Someone suggested Codex Shredder, and I was like, oh, yeah, but that only hits a target player. Like, that's, you know, I want, you, you want to be able to do it to everyone. And then he's like, yeah, what if one person doesn't have something you like? It's like, oh, yeah, that's actually very helpful still, because you're yeah. not going to use those abilities otherwise. So it's, you know, it's, it's and, and, you know, the five mana sack it is actually a really nice ability. I think it's an under underrated ability just to get any card. So you can get, uh, you know, one of your non-creature spells uh, that you have in your deck right back to your hand as well. It's well nice. and, and realistically... Like, if, you know, decks have lots of lands in them, like, mm -hmm. a third, more than a third of a deck is usually lands. Mm -hmm. So, right away, we're, and then, so, if out of the rest of it is, like, there's probably a very good chance that we want two things on top, and we only want one to change. Yeah. I, I wonder what's more frequent, if we want a single card to change, or if we want two cards to change. Exactly. I don't I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. But um, Oh, that's a real Sophie's choice. It's all going to be about who you're playing and what their decks are looking like. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned lands, because we are going to get to that in a second. But Sean, why don't you talk about uh, this? the next two cards here? Okay, Temporal Spring. One, green, oh, blue. Oh, sorry. This is... Oh, right. Okay, so these are just other ways to control the top deck. Sorry, I thought we were moving on to the next thing. I forgot. Yeah. It's a, it's a sorcery. It's one green blue for a sorcery. Uh, old border, old art. Uh, put target permanent on top of its owner's library. Uh, it has to be a non-creature for us to take advantage of it, but if there's a cool artifact or enchantment, maybe that Sol Ring you've got, we'll put that on the top of your deck, and then uh, Paco's going to fetch it, and I'm going to cast it with Halden later on and get extra mana to cast the other things I stole. Cool thing is, actually, if you wanted to hit up a creature that's tough to, that's, you know, otherwise is like, somehow tough to deal with indestructible or something pop it on top uh, uh paco still exiles that card that's you know true what I mean? like it even still though gets i can't use it, it. Yeah. yeah i can't use it but hmm, hey not bad you can't either uh also spin into myth it's an instant it's four and a blue put target creature on top of its owner's library then fate seal two so fate seal doesn't exist on many things and what that means is look at the top two cards of an opponent's library and then scry with them, right? So it's like yeah. you scry for other people. So you put a creature on top, then you fate seal two. So you can either put that creature on the bottom and bury it forever. And as long as the, the other card is a non-creature, you can leave that one on top. Or if it's another creature, put that on the bottom and roll the dice. That's right. So this is the one time in my deck brewing career where i've wished fate seal was on more cards yeah uh, it was a future sight mechanic and it's on this card it's on uh it's on a sliver that gives every sliver fate seal one right. or two or something right and then on the on official fate seal uh jace the mind seeker has is the like mind sculptor sculptor sorry that's what yeah the called. big one the big one yeah not mine daddy seeker. jace yeah, uh, he has it uh, as one of his abilities, too. So not an ability you see much. Uh, and honestly, it would be really great for Alden and Paco. It would be so, so good. Yeah. Uh, but Spin into Myth does the job. Uh, and then finally, uh, Expel from Orazka. One and a blue for an instant. And it has... So you need a send to really get the most out of it. So if you have 10 or more permanents, you have the City's Blessing. And so I'll just read, with the City's Blessing, you get to return target non-land permanent to the top of its owner's library. Uh, if you don't have a send yet, it only goes back to their hand, which is like, that's not a bad fail case if yeah. I need it, if I'm desperate. But 
getting the getting the city's blessing is pretty easy in commander yeah and again with all of these like we're hitting permanent so we ideally are going to be putting a cool enchantment or an artifact even a planeswalker on top of uh on top of those libraries and then being able to exile and cast them with Paco and Halden. Have um, you looked at the art from Expel from Arazka? I currently am looking at it, yeah. Uh, doesn't it look like that giant statue was drinking a glass of milk and then someone told a hilarious joke <laughs> and then he's just spitting the milk Yeah, he's just barfing the milk out. <laughs> Him and his th two friends? <laughs> yeah, you told a hilarious joke while <laughs> all these arches were drinking milk. <laughs> they were drinking a lot of milk by the looks of it. They <laughs> yeah, downed our, entire our... cartons and then you told a hilarious joke and it made them arches... not only spit out what was in their mouth, but barf up what was in their belly. Arches are thirsty. <laughs> they, yeah, they're <laughs> real thirsty. Um, so we got to get uh, Paco to be able to attack. So a couple of easy ways to make that happen um, is Dolmen Gate. Uh, it's the two-mana artifact that says prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to attacking creatures you control. Uh, we can kind of attack with uh, with reckless abandon uh, once we have this guy out. And I Another gift from Mystery Booster. I was going to say, yeah, it got reprinted in Mystery yeah. Booster, which in the... Um, uh, in the um, Discord chat, I accidentally called Secret Packs. Uh, <laughs> I was like, didn't this get reprinted in, like, Secret Packs? <laughs> and they're like, you mean Mystery Booster? It's like, yeah, 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 man, Secret Same Packs. Same thing. Same thing. Secret Packs. Uh, here's the one that I, here's one that I uh, included because I was like, ooh, I'll give him haste. Uh, but luckily, we would run this either way. Swift Foot Boots, uh, two mana for the artifact, the equipment, equips for one. Get him, give give him hexproof and haste. Giving our boy hexproof is nice, just because you know we don't want him to be removed. And well, it doubles up on the haste, sure, but hexproof is why this is in here, obviously, as it is for probably most decks. Um, we got to be able to get our boy in, and obviously, there's you know there's a way here and there to be able to do it as well. But um, uh, generally speaking, it's nice that the the haste does exist on on Paco because you're going to be able to choose that that window of opportunity for just being able to attack any of your opponents. Uh, when their shields are down. And don't forget that Paco is going to get those plus one, plus one counters on it, especially if you know what's coming up. You can kind of do the math and figure out, oh, this is like he's actually going to attack as like a five, five or, you know, maybe even a six, six at times. So very cool. Uh, so, how, so you know, let's say we cast, a, let's say we get a couple of these things off of our opponent's libraries. They're sitting up there in the exile zone. They got their little fetch, fetch counters on them, the little bones. Uh, and, um, but we got to be able to cast these spells. And sometimes it's hard because we're going to get some big, cool stuff here and we're going to be using a lot of our own mana. So let's explore the ways that we can cast the most things. Should we explore the ways to cast the most things? Let's explore the ways. <laughs> with explore with explore uh we're talking about playing extra lands that's right uh if you noticed carefully we get to play card non-land cards exiled the wording or non-creature no sorry you're right we get to play non-creature cards lands are non-creature cards and you can play lands you cannot cast lands if they had said you may cast these spells lands will be out of the equation but lands are on the menu so <laughs> explore one in a green sorcery you may play an additional land this turn and draw a card that helps us play more of the lands we're exiling we've also got enter the unknown it's a single green for a sorcery target creature you control explores and you may play an additional land this turn and the explorer isn't bad either you get to look at the top card you reveal the top card library and you can put it into your hand if it's a land otherwise it goes to your or otherwise you choose leave it on top put it in the graveyard and the creature that explored gets a plus one plus one counter enter the unknown has like extra utility in this deck because you get to kind of uh, uh add that extra counter to paco if it's a if you're looking at the top of your deck like if you're allowed to look at it and you know it's something that you don't want there uh i guess either way yeah you can cast into the unknown get rid of it you know all that kind of stuff yeah good good and then of course urban evolution Three green, blue, sorcery. Draw three cards. You may play an additional land this turn. Love it. I just included some of the like uh, temporary ways to add, add additional lands, but we have we have some of the more traditional, like you can play an extra land stuff, like Mina and Den, that kind of stuff in the deck as well. Mm -hmm. um, just wanted to highlight some of the like instants and sorceries ways to do it. Um, so so one you know the ability to play extra lands on a turn is is absolutely awesome in this deck. 
Uh, and don't forget, these lands will sit there in that exile zone. <clears throat> so if you don't have Urban Evolution the turn you attack, it's okay. You can cast it later and we can grab that um, We can grab that land from the exile zone, again, as long as we have Halden. So uh, once we have a bunch of lands, uh, it's really going to be helpful to get something like Wilderness Reclamation out. Three and a green for the enchantment that's at the beginning of your end step. Untap all lands you control. Attack, yes. get in, exile, all that good stuff. Play a couple of the lands from it, whatever. And then untap and just have those instants at your, you know, at your at your disposal. Um, also, we have Bear Umbra, which is very similar. Two green green. It's the aura that says uh, the creature gets plus two plus two, and whenever it attacks, untap all lands you control. This one gets you ready that turn. You know, put this on Paco. He attacks. Uh, your lands untap, and <laughs> you get to exile all the stuff, and all your mana is ready. Like this is a wombo combo with Paco. Love it, love it. Powerful. Combo. Um, but now we're doing all this stuff, Andy. Are right, can we get involved in any shenanigans? Oh, you better believe that that this uh, part of the show is called shenanigans. <laughs> uh, we got a couple. Obviously, there's a lot of shenanigans going on. Um, <laughs> some of which we've already mentioned. Uh, but I mean, why don't you take this one? Because this just this one just Ooh. gets out of control. Thousand year storm. 1k storm baby for blue red enchantment whenever you cast an instant or sorcery copy it for each other instant or sorcery you've cast before it this turn you may choose new targets for the copy uh it's i mean it's got storm in the title it's not technically storm because storm counts all spells but uh you're casting multiple instants and sorceries and you know the last section we did was sorceries that let you play extra lands so if you're allowed to like copy those a copied explore means you can play multiple lands that turn and explore also draws a card so it's very <laughs> possible if you can somehow storm into like eight explorers you get to play eight lands yeah i discovered building that um casualties of war thousand year storm deck that explore is one of the better things to thousand year storm out you just get to ramp like crazy as well as draw a bunch of cards and every land you draw you're like great i just play it you know like it's it's well, and, and, and in a storm turn i hope you everyone listening realizes what this means in the middle of a storm turn being able to play extra lands means they're coming in untapped as long unless they're like tap lands somehow so you get to keep the storm chain going yeah exactly yeah that's why it's so incredible right like yeah. um yeah, so Thousand Year Storm, we're not totally tuned up to like really break Thousand Year Storm like a lot of decks do, uh, but we're 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 likely to be able to get an extra storm trigger off of, you know, one of the spells that we cast from our opponent's library, hopefully, right? Um, yeah. And if not, like maybe you cast something like a, you know, like you cast an Explorer before you go into into combat this time, if you have Thousand Year Storm out, because then when you when you hit something with Paco maybe we'll be able to we'll get two of those right uh two of those sorcery triggers or whatever it is right so a lot of a op lot of options there uh another one that will guarantee you getting the double is swarm intelligence six and a blue for the enchantment whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell you may copy that spell you may choose new targets for the copy we got a couple uh like copy spell cards in here just because naturally that's going to be really powerful with this type of deck um swarm intelligence is I think usually not the best one because it costs seven mana. It takes up like a whole turn and does nothing, and you have to wait. But this turn, it it uh, this this time it, it it can be really great uh, to drop seven mana. If, if you have something like Bear Umbra, then just untap all your lands and then you know get to cast some stuff. So, yeah. some intelligence. Hopefully, you'll be able to pay this off uh, quickly, and you'll you'll get uh, the worth from it. Uh, yeah, and I noticed you've also included Savage Beating. Yeah, one of my uh, favorite I do love card, card names. <laughs> Yeah, and like the art, like those arm things. Like yeah. uh, this guy, like Jax walks up to this guy and gives him his lunch money. Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. Jax has nothing on this guy. Uh, <laughs> Jax so, from Mortal Kombat cowers yeah. to the guy in Savage Beating. Totally, totally. You think those are metal arms? The <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh boy, I snorted. So Savage Beating, three red, red for an instant. You can only play it during your turn, and you can only play it during combat. And it has an entwine of one in red. So you get to choose one of these, or if you've paid a total of seven mana, you get both of these. Creatures you control gain double strike until end of turn, or untap all creatures you control and after this phase there's an additional combat phase so i mean 
giving your whole team double strike and an extra combat phase what else do you want yeah right um the double strike is i probably is is great because paco is gonna get pretty big eventually uh, but the doubling up of the combat is what we're really using this for and it is wild you like because you know let's face it like a lot of times you are going to be attacking with paco and you are just going to flip random cards because you, you might not have the stuff that looks um looks at the at the top of your opponent's libraries so you know you, you want to be doing this as much as possible that's what's going to give you the most card advantage from it uh so being able to double up on the attack triggers is, is pretty sweet the the only the only sad thing about maybe you've got a wilderness look reclamation maybe you've got something that's doubling they're copying your spells like it would be so amazing to get like four savage beating copies on the stack and Oof. so you can attack with Paco four times but this this runs into the same problem as dreaming too big with a with a villainous wealth like if if you do that if you attack with Paco with double strike six yeah. times everyone's just dead so You're it doesn't matter kill them. <laughs> it doesn't matter like <laughs> exactly. it's the same as a huge villainous wealth is like well it's i got your whole deck but you're out so i don't get to i don't oh, get anything <laughs> I killed you your cards leave my exiles on i get to cast them oh, oh. man Oh man, uh, and that's you know that's likely to happen too if you have the next card, which is Helm of the Host. Ooh, baby, <laughs> look, this Helm is we love this card. It's so great. Love it, love it. Four mana for the legendary equipment, uh, five to equip. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary if equipped creature is legendary, and the token gains haste. Um, it's you know I, th I think since we first started playing with this card in Dominaria. And we were just so hyped, and it was like my favorite card I've ever seen. Um, I've definitely come down on Helm of the Host a lot since then, um, because that is a serious mana cost, man. Four to cast, five Steep. to equip. That sometimes takes up two turns, uh, which is, and then if someone just removes the creature, like, get out. It's the worst. So unacceptable. And like, usually we can kind of ignore that cost in Commander. Like, oh, someone removed my creature as I put it on, someone got a two for one. Okay, you know what? Guess what, though? I've got some crazy spells that draw, draw me a ton of cards. Or, you know, my other two opponents are now focused on that player. You know, there's ways to even that out. But Helm of the Host sometimes takes two, <laughs> you know, takes two turns. And then someone removes the Helm of the Host. You're just like, blow my brains out. I hate it. So, I know. Significant risk here, really. People, truly, people truly don't. People people don't want you to have Helm of the Host. No, they don't. Like, people will, will be like. They will use their artifact removal on it. They will. Yeah. Or hold their creature removals like I'm holding this spell. Mm -hmm. I will never tap out. Uh, so if you ever try to equip anything, I'm killing it. Yeah. Because you're not gonna get. I'm not gonna let you get multiple things of Helm of the Host. Yeah, absolutely. And and as well they should. And you're gonna yeah. get mad when they do it, like I do every single time. I'm like, oh man, come on. Yeah. Uh, but they should, and they do. And so it's it's you know it's a risky card, but you know what? We love a high ceiling. We love. We a love ceiling. a high ceiling. Twelve and... foot ceilings. It's serious, seriously high, uh, and it doesn't. And I mean, if you can stick it, and if and if Paco gets this, it's just madness, and it's great. And you have these two monster dogs <laughs> chasing people, and it's really fun. Yeah. Um. So you know, we'll, it's it's worth the risk, but don't forget about the risk because it is it is real. If you can, sometimes maybe hold up a counter spell after you've cast this. Like, don't cast that extra other thing you were gonna do. Like, hold up the negate for when they try to kill this. Like, that's. Hold, don't cast this until you have something that can protect it. That that yeah. makes a lot of sense too. So be aware of that. Um, and those those are the shenanigans. Uh, you know, various ways to do all of those things. Massive, like massive ramp in this deck because of the those extra lands. Like at the very least, you're hitting land drops every turn for sure. So that's great. Um, but with the other stuff, you know, we're ramping hard. We're casting all kinds of stuff, getting all kinds of card advantage. Uh, this deck is a lot of fun. Uh, Holden and Paco, yeah, really, really cool. So I'm I'm glad that we we revisited the partner commanders, and I'm I'm super happy that we were able to be the previews. You know, we we were the preview for this card. We were the ones who got to first see this card outside of Wizards. Love it, love Very it. Cool. Uh, so surprises and discoveries. Uh, Sean, why don't you read this one? This one's cool. I will seize the day and take the surprises and discoveries to mention seize the day three in a <laughs> red sorcery. Untap target creature. After this main phase, there is an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase and has flashback for two and a red. Now, I know th this is where I think I know where the surprise or discovery is because most people's first discovery of this card is that 
although it gives you an additional combat phase, it only untaps one creature. Mm -hmm. So unless you have Vigilance Tribal, you don't really get to take advantage of all those extra of that extra combat step. I mean, with seven mana, you can take three combat steps in a row. Uh, but that's the beauty of Paco. Sometimes you only want Paco to attack a few extra times. That's the creature you care the most about attacking over and over. So this is a perfect card in this deck. Uh, finally. Finally a deck where this is a great yeah, card. Agreed. I mean, I'm sure this is great in a lot of like like uh, Voltron decks too, of course. right? And like of you course. said, Vigilance. But yeah, same same idea here. This is going to work so well. Uh, and that, like copying this card is gets really wild because oh you know, wow, um, copying sees the day, getting a couple extras just with Paco. It's so cheap, like four mana to do it the first time. You can afford to to run one of those copy spells after this. Three mana from the graveyard, exactly the, for the graveyard too. So it's yeah, this is this is probably the best additional combat one that we've included in the in the whole deck actually yep agreed uh i'm gonna do some i'm gonna do my little shout outs here uh our discord helpers were wild I actually sprung this on them pretty late because uh of of me accidentally deleting the previous episode from my computer which means sean and i had to really scramble and record tonight and uh and get uh that episode recorded re-recorded and then we were like well you know what let's let's do this one too we're going to be here we're going to be recording and uh the discord helpers really came through dinesh bondo lol what clockwork 12 uh in there helping me late last night uh put this deck together we had we had some fun had some laughs it was great um uh so thank you guys for being in there and if you want to join in there you know you can check out our patreon patreon.com slash commanders brew uh to get in on our discord uh well the Discord helpers were mentioned, and uh, that means it is time for the budget report. Here boy, here boy, here boy, here boy. Good boy, good boy. Fetch the lands. <laughs> Fetch the lands. Uh, this one, okay, so again, I told you we were on a pretty tight uh, timeline here. So I put this one all into the budget report, and it came out as like higher than I like normally. I mean, um, and, you know, like when we when we have a last minute budget report, our accountant team, like we pay them overtime when we do a budget report late at night. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, they're off the clock. This is an emergency yeah, order. <laughs> so so basically what what's going on with this deck and, and it's a little more expensive. I'll, I'll tell you right now. So the TCG low. Is 114 bucks. Ooh, that's low. That's that's. You know, that's not that's as low, low as we like. That's the low. No, no. The market is 165. Okay. So, like, it's actually not, like, I would kind of expect it to be way higher than that based on what the low is. But anyways, um, this deck is kind of a perfect storm of stuff that is expensive in Commander. Yeah. It's It's a lot of uh, uh, extra land drop stuff, which is, like, dumb and expensive for some reason. Yeah. And then it's a lot of... Um, uh, extra attack stuff, which is like rare and fi tough to find, and even a card like Seize the Day is like three or four bucks. Yeah, uh, which I thought that was going to be dirt cheap because it got an, it, it even got a reprint and isn't is still kind of expensive. Yeah, I th I, th I remember that in like a bulk bin at a GP yeah. at some point where I first discovered it wasn't as good as I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, and in addition to that, we've got some stuff that wants to like put stuff on the top of our library. Yeah. So that's also that's also expensive. So we have this yeah. a, a bunch of stuff coming together to make this more expensive. Now, now normally I I probably would have cut a couple of these cards to bring our because I don't want a deck that costs one hundred and fourteen bucks. I want it to cost roughly half that. Uh, uh, but you know I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about the top three cards here and and the cutability of them like we normally do. So first, cutability off, we have the, we have mystical tutor, which like. I thought our sweet, sweet mystical tutor had come down to like four or five dollars recently, it and it did. had, and then went right back up again. And I don't know why that is. It's a one mana tutor, I guess. But it was it lived at like four or five bucks for a long time. Yeah, and something brought it back up. So, anyways, yeah, the one mana tutor. Search your library for an instant or sorcery. Reveal it. Put it on top of your library, or shuffle your library, then put it on top. So, obviously, really great in a stack because we can guarantee something from our own deck, but it's $12 now it doubled in price more than doubled from the last time. Like from what I had in my head. Yeah. Um, that that's sucks. what, th that's what I do when I go shopping for magic cards, like the amount of cards I think I bought. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, that's about 20 bucks. Let me go see my shopping cart. Oh, that's 40 bucks worth yeah. of <laughs> And what's doing that? Oh my God, Mystical Tutor's $12? Like, like it had it gone from like when I first started playing Commander, Mystical Tutor was out of the range of what I was willing to buy. It was probably yeah. even, maybe even higher than $12. Then it came right down with a couple, or at least one, yeah, this this Ultimate Masters reprint. And then, uh, yeah, now we're back up there again, so that sucks. So hopefully everyone got their Mystical Tutors when they were $5 and under. Um, this next one's tough too, Sean. Yeah, this is Helm of the Host. Helm of the Host, that's up to like eight fifty, nine bucks, ten bucks, depending where you go. I mean, it's a Commander player's dream, right? It, it, it is magical Christmas land in one card. So, yeah. like, I get that. I get that everyone's got to own one. If you don't have this in your Commander collection, you simply must. So, like, uh, even it's even though it's so hard to cast, even though it's so hard to use effectively and people will remove it. And, like, yeah. uh, what can I say? This is what Commander players love to do in a card. So, I understand. We spelled out the reasons why it's not as good as it looks and it's and a, but but of course i'm still running it you know yeah, what i mean so i course. get why it's 850 but my god it shouldn't be 850 this was in dominaria like this wasn't that long ago like a lot of these got opened yeah um so it's it's unfortunate that it's almost it's pushing 10 bucks at this point i i just can't i can't tell someone to include this card for 10 bucks i just can't i would never um anyways uh and finally we have dried of the elysian grove which kind of represents a couple of different cards, the cards that w allow us to play additional lands um, if they're not named Mina and Den. Uh, it's the <laughs> two and a green, two, four, that, and then also lets you, it's also lets your lands tap for any color because they're every basic land type. Uh, $8, I mean, we want this extra land drop thing. This is one that I would normally be working hard with the budget to like fit in still. Um, uh, but there's so many cards, again, these extra attack cards these types of cards that are just they're all like five to eight dollars and you're just like well what like if i want this ability in my deck i kind of have to pay this money for it which stinks man um yeah you know so so the best thing to do for, for a deck like this that where it's like it's coming up much higher than we'd like it to in my opinion is to you know buy the commander deck right buy the deck because we probably are going to play with a lot of those cards in there anyways um, uh, this one actually has like lightning greaves in it. It's got some, it's got a, it's got a bunch of good stuff in it. Uh, you could even maybe sell the stuff you're not going to use and then like sort of trade it in for these, these, the must have cards of this deck. Not saying that they're mystical tutor or Helm of the host. I think your must, your must haves are more along the lines of like, uh, savage beating and, um, you know, some of like one of those, one of these other ones, you know, Dolmen gate. I know it's, it's cheaper now, but like, you know, anyways, do that. And like, I think that way you'll find you'll get a little more bang for your buck almost, you know, like. Um... Well, I also want to propose, like, let's not forget that, like, maybe put a moratorium on buying a lot of cards for the next while. Because later this year, we're supposed to get a commander set, like a, a booster pack, yep. draftable commander, QB kind of drafty thing. And I mean. I have to assume, like, you know, it's easy to rip on wizards and say, wizards, please, uh, mm -hmm. about be making things that seem like bonehead moves. But what we have to realize is they're working with a two year window, right? Like, mm -hmm. we all realize, like, hey, this sucks. And, like, okay, uh, we want to fix it, but we've already, the next two years are done. Like, we, yeah. the first opportunity to fix it isn't for two years from now. So, this set that's about to come out could be like a good chance for them to finally be like you know what this is the best solution we came up with it two years ago it's finally coming to fruition maybe we'll get a savage beating in there maybe mystical tutor comes back in there maybe mm -hmm. some other cards come back in there uh, that would be my vote like like maybe do a temporary proxy for now if you really want to try the deck uh see how you like it if you love it spend the money on the cards but we might be able to get real copies of these cards coming up soon you know, that's a great point. We actually don't mention that too often, which is like if there is an expensive card that you're thinking of using, do a proxy and try it out. Just and just let your play group know, hey, I'm thinking about buying this card. It's twelve dollars, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play with it for a while and see how it goes first. I know I've heard that advice before, but um I don't I don't think we've mentioned it too many times. So just 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 a reminder that uh, that is 
I think like 99% of commander players you meet, whether it be at your store or in your meta, are probably going to be fine with you trying out uh, a card like that. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's do favorite cards and then we're out of here. Okay. Uh, uh, mine, um, so many to choose from in here, but uh, I really like the way Fury Storm works in this deck. It's two red red for the instant. It's that when you cast it, you copy it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. And because we have partners, it does count each partner as a different time. So if you've cast Halden and Paco, you have cast your command your commanders twice. Uh, so you get two triggers. Uh, this one says copy target instant or sorcery spell. So we'll get the one for the Fury Storm. We'll get the copy. And again, if we have another one, we get another copy. <laughs> so like, so we have a spell out there. We play Fury Storm. We get to copy it ideally three times if you have both your, your commanders out pretty yes. incredible right so so again that works we get the original spell we then get the fury storm just base copy so even if we have not cast our commanders we still get to copy it with fury storm but then we get to copy fury storm for each time our commanders have been cast so we could get potentially the first time we've cast each of our commanders four copies of this spell just by casting fury storm in addition to the original spell Right, and, uh, and let's remind cool. everybody that these are probably going to be a cool instant we stole from someone else's deck. That's the other thing. And the other thing is, actually, we don't even have to have cast it ourselves. Yeah. Copy, target, instant, or sorcery spell, period. It doesn't have to be one that we right. control. So if someone else cast it, great. We can get that, too, right? Like, that's pretty awesome. I didn't think of that. That's amazing. And choosing new targets is obviously, like, kind of goes without saying. Oh. It's very important. Um, I'm going to remove one cool. of your things. Cool. I'm gonna remove four of yours. <laughs> I included all of the all of the um, the like commander storm cards, uh, all three colors. Uh, the green one is not great in this deck because it's like it's only, I think it's like non land permanent. So you, yeah. you flip it till you get them. So we're probably gonna hit some like mana rocks and stuff. But like it's just so fun. You, you gotta go for it. Yeah. Uh, my favorite card is similar to the advantage of a partner commander getting you extra cast of commander. It also turns on legendary sorceries a lot more easily. Uh, this is Karn's Temporal Sundering. Four blue blue, legendary sorcery. You can only cast it if you have a legendary creature or planeswalker out. But with partners, that's even easier. But let's be realistic. We want to cast this when Paco's out. That's really when we mostly care about this because mm -hmm. target player takes an extra turn after this one. That's going to be us for an extra Paco attack. But also we get to return up to one target non land permanent to its owner's hand. And then you exile this card. So it clears the way for Paco if there's like just no way to get through, but there's one thing stopping you on one board. Cool. That one's gone. Maybe it's a propaganda. Maybe that's the thing that's doing it. It's back in your hand, and I'm going to attack this turn and the next turn with Paco to get even more stuff exiled. Uh, this is a, extra turns like this are great too because like six man is a fair bit, but that sets us up to use all that mana the next turn and use all those extra spells, and now we have like double access and more mana to do it nobody taking turns in between messing our stuff <laughs> up right exactly yeah, yeah 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 no great choice great choice uh, another kind of way to get her get like kind of an even better like extra attack thing like um, yeah but of course t extra spells extra extra turn spells also cost a lot of money so we've we've actually only included the cheap one cheap one of those actually yeah uh, so you know this deck gets expensive so fast but it, it is a lot of fun and i do um urge you to take a look at the deck list uh it's over it's on tcg it's, it's also going to be up on uh, wizard tower and uh um yeah take a look at take a look at that list and um see if you can tweak it a little bit you know to work for your budget you don't have to do the exact same thing we did obviously but uh but take a look at it guys thanks so much for watching uh this was a lot of fun thanks so much for listening uh love these guys very good boys all around both mustachioed and canine alike yeah um uh it, just a reminder if you're in the states check out uh tcg player use our affiliate link and uh you'll be we'll be able to get a little cut of that it's a great way to like um uh contribute to the show if you're all if you're just buying cards anyways from tcg player it's great uh and um uh, wizard tower if you're in canada use our coupon code and you can get an actual uh discount off on your off on your magic single so check those places out and check us out next week we'll be back with a brand new deck deck we'll see you then bye bye Thanks for watching. If you love what we're doing, consider supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash commandersbrew. And if you want to get any of the cards from our deck list, go to our TCG player affiliate link below. 
that helps us out too. And for a free way to help us out, consider sharing the show with some friends. Like and subscribe, add a comment or two. See you later. Bye.